the two greatest goods Kath I love 121 you may not notice any difference and why should you <laughs> but I've uh, I enjoy fasting probably a, an odd thing to say but I do uh, I it was probably 40 years ago when I first started fasting there was a gentleman an American and he was a grandfather his name was Bragg and uh, he used to promote fasting but anyway I read a few of his books and I took it up and uh, not for any not to lose weight or any reason at all I, I took it up because I thought oh it just seemed to uh, uh, smarten the mind and I quite enjoyed the fact that my mind <laughs> was in charge of my tummy so uh, but it's difficult because uh, if one pass and one's fasting for the, for the joy of it or the enjoyment of it uh, more than the health benefits it's hard to find that time, that free time. But uh, luckily, I uh, on I started on Tuesday. So this is my fifth day, and that's no food at all, and uh, just uh, water. Occasionally, I might have some grape juice. Uh, just a very <laughs> the fluid diet, and uh, and it's first day is okay. Second day usually is a bit more difficult and I tend to uh, I had a really good sleep and uh, I've got the time to do it third day uh, feeling better but the fourth day wow I woke up and I was bouncing out of bed full of energy oh wow this is really good light and uh, went for a few walks light on the feet and oh, really good and today even better this is fifth day, fifth day. and uh, but since then, of course, uh, I've uh, found out that what happens when you when you do that, the body goes into survival mode, and uh, and uh, you get a batch of new T cells, new neurons for the brain. You get a complete new uh, 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 oh, what's it termed uh, immune system. Uh, if you've got blood pressure, it goes down. So there's all these benefits that go with it. And uh, which I was totally unaware of, but anyway. So uh, <laughs> if you see, I don't think it's made any difference to my wrinkles. But anyway, that's okay. So, uh, but the the thing is that the the, the cathars, the perfect eye, the parfaits, the the bon, the good bonhommes and bonfems, the the cathar clergy. Of course, they were celibate and they were uh, vegetarians and they were uh, uh, and uh, uh, they fasted and they had some very long fasts so I don't know whether it's a, a throw over from a, from a past life or not but I just whenever I do get a chance and it's not often because usually there's every day or every second day there's something to do so I think oh I can't do it then I can't do it but I don't have a, a nothing until next Tuesday so I'll probably give it up on maybe Monday or whatever it's, it's no big deal anyway uh, so, but uh, so the the the, uh, the Cathars, in that respect, they were fairly unique. There were individual monks that did it, but the Cathars did it as as a clergy, as a group. Uh, so, but the other thing is that uh, the two greatest goods. I haven't forgot the title. And it was an odd one because uh, I, I think I've spoken a bit about it before. Uh, but Henri de Navarre asked Jim Callahan, Gulliam, uh, it's in the book, the, the dialogues. What's the two greatest goods? And uh, so uh, I had the same question. I thought, oh, two greatest goods: love, compassion, uh, time.
tolerance, uh, kindness, caring. <laughs> no. no, Henri said no. He said the two greatest goods are the gratitude for existence, this life and now others, the existence as a soul, and the second was the absolute acceptance of necessity. Oh, <laughs> well, I have to think about that a bit. The absolute acceptance of necessity. And what it means, to my mind, is that whatever's happened in this life, in our previous lives, everything that has actually happened was necessary to get us from our point of creation up to this point in time now. No matter what we've done, that was necessary even if we don't or didn't understand it at the time and maybe don't understand it now. But the absolute acceptance of necessity means that you, abs you accept that's emotionally, mindfully, you, you accept things and if you accept it, that means you can talk about that particular issue, whatever it is, Maybe you hurt somebody, maybe someone hurt you, maybe but it's, it's an, some issue that is obviously very painful to you. The absolute acceptance of reality, it, the reality of the situation was everything that has occurred in your lifetime and that is occurring is necessary was necessary to get you to this point in time. Now, at this point in time, as to what direction you you travel, that's up to fate and yourself. But why is it the two greatest goods? The two best things that can happen to us? <clears throat> well, the first thing is, Gratitude for existence. Thankfulness for existence. The, uh, the mystic and the philosopher, the English Blake, he was asked, he said, can you tell me what's the the secret or the ingredient, the main ingredient of happiness. He said, yes, I can tell you. And he said, also, I can tell you in one word. Oh, well, what's that? He said, gratitude. The thing is that it's very hard to be thankful, to have gratitude for something, and be, and be uh, angry and upset. Normally, when we're thankful or grat grateful for something, we're happy about it. We celebrate the fact. And so, with with upon our creation uh, we're given the gift of life and upon our creation we're given the gift of our soul, our divine spark was given the gift of immortality for eternity in other words you never cease to exist now that entails along the way lifetime after lifetime until eventually we, we as the Buddhists say, we get off this wheel of reincarnation and we're then embedded in the world of spirit and then things continue in that state of being and we ascend as we learn and do and we've got our things to do over there. But being having given the gift of, of creation, life should be a celebration. Now, there's lots of nasties in life, and no doubt I have, and you have, 
shed that have had your fair share of things that have been very nasty. Also, you're aware of things that are not very nice and very nasty and downright cruel that happen to other people and beings and animals and the environment. And you're not very happy with that. But that's the reality of the world as it is. So it's within this reality of pain and pleasure, uh, being helped and being hurt, uh, this duality of life, that we can find peace of mind and tranquility of soul. Now to obtain that peace of mind and tranquility of soul, which gives us a certain lightness of being, notwithstanding all the harsh realities of life, comes back to this, the second of the two greatest goods. And that means the total acceptance of necessity. It's the total acceptance of all that has happened and is happening to bring you to this point in time. If you have this total acceptance, it means that you can talk about the thing that was really hurtful to you or maybe you hurt somebody else and you can talk about it now without you becoming emotional about it. That means total acceptance. Now, some things are very, very hard to forgive and forget. We don't necessarily have to forget, but we do need to forgive. And it's a matter of forgiving and also not being judgmental. But there are things going on today, not just in our own lives, but other people's lives, to the environment, to animals, domesticated and wild. There's things that are happening and we just feel impotent. You know, I'm here in America or in Australia or England or Germany, or Sweden, China or Japan, and you really feel for this situation, for what's going on. But you feel, what can I do? Obviously you contribute to it in, in, in your own way, with time and money, if you can. But the best way, if you have something that is hurtful to you, the best way, or, or there's some issue that is hurting something else, the best way, oh no, I shouldn't say the best way, it's the best way I know, it may not be the best way, but the best way I know is that if you know who's doing that, and even if you don't know who to do it, you, it's sending out that thought and it's sending, it's sending out loving, unjudgmental thoughts to that particular person that's creating that hurt to you or to someone else. You wish them well. You wish them well for their family. You wish that life's been good to them. Uh, you wish their family as well. You just send out all these loving thoughts. Now, this is powerful stuff. I've already spoken on previous videos on how different people that I've given this advice to and they've come back one person the very next day and said I did that last night I sent out loving thoughts and you wouldn't believe it that person has never ever contacted me ever in my life and the next and the next morning I had this telephone call from her and, it was she, and what I'm saying is thought and loving thoughts has power love has power But we, as humans, we tend to think of judgment and laws and punishment and jail. Okay, this is necessary in lots of cases, but it doesn't always work. But from our own point of view, for it 
to work and also if we're doing that we're doing something we're taking action we're doing something positive now having done that that that's it it's so it's the only way that I know that I can put in some power towards writing a situation that you feel is wrongful or hurtful. So to the Qatar, <laughs> we know it's all about love and uh, and yet the two greatest goods according to the perfect eye, Helmut de Nevoz, uh, pretty wise, a pretty wise man <coughs> and he's pretty spot on with his advice as he said the two greatest goods are gratitude for existence so that means we're alive appreciating the gift of a gift of existence the gift of life and that's the best way to to uh, to be thankful for it is to celebrate life and try and bring joy and light and uh, yeah and, and try and elevate people in a spiritual way if one can but the, usually the best example is oneself if we're going around with our down and our eyebrows down and we're gloomy and uh, not very happy at all with ourselves or the situation it ain't gonna whatever you whatever your whatever your uh, argument is it's not going to convince the other person it's like going to a doctor and he's he's puffing away on a cigarette and he's got a paunch and he's bald and he's old and he's wrinkled and he's telling you what's the best things to do f for you uh, for your life and you think well mate you, you, should, you should be taking your own advice so I think we do have to take control of not just our spirituality but we do have to take control of of our lives and our physical being as well and the second thing the second good the second uh, greatest good is it's for our emotional well-being because if we can uh, accept what all it is that has happened to us and we can think about it and it doesn't upset us this gives us an, an emotional happiness and that's an, an, an uh, tranquility of mind at the emotional level and this is very important so on my fifth day of my fast uh, I brought in the wanted to chat about the two greatest goods because uh, uh, it's a little bit offbeat as so many things that are to do with Cathars are and uh, I just think there are two things that are well worth thinking about bye for now Talk soon.